So after being pronounced a rock star, which was for me very exciting, I was able to drive a few hours down to the Gold Coast where the slave fortresses were. And what that exactly means is these forts were built and that's where the slaves were put and then they were deported to North America. started all the way back from the Portuguese, then the English, and the Americans. They were bartering in the slave trade. And it starts with, you know, we go into the dungeon where it's like underground and it's really dark and dank and mildewy and you can almost hear the crashing of the waves from outside. And you know, you go into this room and has no ventilation, nothing and they would put about two to three hundred Africans in it and just shut the doors and lock it. So I'm only imagining like what these people who are injured and hurt and been fighting and whipped and beaten, what life must be like. So they shackled both the legs and the arms all together. The captives slept on straw mats on the floor Fed twice daily in the morning and in the evening. It is believed that those confined to this particular section were never given chance to go out to eat. And there was an opening here where sometimes the officers stood and then threw out the food to the captives here. So over here, survival of the fetus was the order of the day. One of the things that really caught me off guard and I found really educational was the concept that he, African tribal chiefs who had been warring would often take prisoners and then they would sell them. They were taking people from other warring villages and bringing them to the dungeons and then trading them for money, for rum, for guns. The captives here were grouped into two. The in-house captives were used to construct a castle, whereas the commercial ones were sent to the Caribbean and American lands. It's the cell popularly called the condemned cells. Those revolted male captives who used the shackles and what have used to fight the English were selected to this area. No food, no water, no light, no air. It shows the extent to which, um, you know, very minor differences can lead us to commit, shall I say, um, I mean, crime, I mean, I call it a crime, you know, yes. crime against ourselves. What we have to channel is that it just got to be a prayer that we put out there that whatever is dividing people that could lead people to something like this never, ever happens again. Never, ever. Oh, that's a great song. Don't get, uh, you got a full super waffle. Not a great scene with your black people, one body before the creator. You pray better when the woman got a born one. And you show that you show the woman got a born one. And then finally, they take us to what they call the door of no return, which is this big wooden door that when it opens, hear it cranking, you know, people were taken, put on boats set to sea and never to return again.